All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dokkan battle video. So as you can see, we are roughly 14 hours away from the release of this year's Dragon Ball Heroes collab banner on both Global and JP. And in today's video, I wanna give you guys some advice about whether or not I think the average Dokkan player should be summoning on this banner, whether it's good value for your stones, and uh, hopefully we can help some people out there who are a little bit unsure at the moment. Okay, so with all that said, let's just jump right into it. And uh, I guess the first thing we'll talk about is whether or not these new collab units are good. And the answer to that is hell yes, man. Especially Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. This guy is honestly on the same level as a new Dokkan Festival exclusive unit, but he's not Dokkan Fest exclusive and he's actually much easier to pull than your average Dokkan Fest unit. And a bunch of these other guys too, like Super Saiyan 4 Broly, I think he's been getting a lot of unnecessary hate. He's not as good as Vegito, that's for sure, but he's also still really, really strong. Like his damage output, I haven't seen the calculations recently, but I've heard he's right up there with some of the hardest hitting TURs in the game right now. And uh, this Toa, Demon Goddess Toa, she is probably the best extreme support in the game right now. Okay, you know what, maybe not as consistent as the Easy A Kid Boo, but she has the potential to be the best extreme support, and she's just very, very good. Dabura's good too. These awakenings for some of the older uh, heroes units, Black Mass Saiyan, Dark Mass King, uh, Super Mira, and uh, Demon God Demigra are also pretty ridiculous. And finally, we have Super Saiyan 4 Gohan and Super Saiyan 4 Bardock. And these guys don't even have Dokkan awakenings, and they're already extremely impressive. So I can only imagine how insane they'll be with token awakenings at some point in the future now of course i did already cover the details for each of these units in a previous video if you guys want to go check that out i'll put a link somewhere above my head but uh, let's highlight a few of the more interesting guys like super saiyan 4 vegeto leader skill is crossover category key plus three hp attack and defense plus 170 percent so this new category that's coming out with the uh, collab, he is definitely the best leader for it. 170% across the board is amazing. And then super attack raises defense for one turn, causes immense damage, and passive is attack and defense plus 140%. Cross over category allies, key plus one, attack and defense plus 20%. Giant ape power category allies, key plus one, attack and defense plus 20%. And high chance of evading enemy super attack and countering with tremendous power. His link set is great as well. Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, Fuse Fighter. Uh, power bestowed by God, prepare for battle, Saiyan Roar, and Fierce Battle. And another highlight for this guy are his stats. He has 17,316 attack at rainbow status, 9,430 defense, and 19,200 HP. These are like top tier Dokkan Festival exclusive stats while getting 180% attack and defense. So after he supers and raises defense for one turn, he should be right around like 150 to 200,000 defense depending on the rotation. If you have supports on rotation, obviously it's going to help with that too. So he's going to be quite tanky while also putting out some massive damage numbers and uh, countering super attacks every other time. Um, he's just amazing. I, I love this unit so much. Obviously the fact that he's Super Saiyan 4 Vegito further helps with his awesomeness, but just as a unit alone, is fantastic. Definitely at the very top of my most wanted list, as I'm sure is the case for most of you guys. And uh, you know what, let's also quickly talk about our girl, Demon Goddess Toa. Uh, Dragon Ball Heroes category Q plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 150%, really good leader skill, super attack immense damage, lowers attack and seals super attack, and passive is attack and defense plus 100%, all allies Q plus 3, Attack and defense plus 30%. So unlike some of the previous Toas, she actually supports all allies, not just extreme allies. Also a high chance of additional attack plus 10% for all allies, and high chance of an additional defense plus 10% for all allies. And then extreme class allies, attack and defense plus 50% and recovers 50% HP when HP is 50% or less once only. So basically as a support unit, she can give all allies key plus three, Attack and defense plus 40%, and then for the one turn you fall below 50% HP, she's going to be giving extreme class up to attack and defense plus 90% while also 
pretty much healing you back to full HP. So yeah, Toa, she's nice, man. Definitely one of the best support units in the game, no question. And like I said, I'm not going to go through all the details for every single unit that's coming, but uh, I wanted to use these two to give you guys a general idea of uh, you know where their power level's at. And for the units alone, I think this banner would be worth summoning on, even if it was a normal banner. But it's not a normal banner, it's actually way better than a regular, you know, like Dokkan Fest banner or something like that. Because it's been confirmed at this point that just like last year, and I think every year before that, this new Heroes banner is going to be a guaranteed featured SSR banner. So every single time you do a multi-summon, you're guaranteed one of the featured units in that final 10th slot. And as far as the featured units go this time around, we're obviously going to have the 6 new units. Super Saiyan 4 Bardock, Super Saiyan 4 Vegito, Super Saiyan 4 Gohan, Super Saiyan 4 Broly, uh, Toa, Dabura, and probably the 4 older Heroes units that are getting Token Awakenings, right? Dark Mask King, Black Mask Saiyan, uh, Super Mira and Makioka form Demigra. So those are most likely the 10 featured SSRs. So that means that every single time you do a multi on this banner, you have at least a 10% chance of pulling Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. I mean, it's actually going to be a little bit higher than that since you can also pull him in the other 9 slots. But uh, 1 in 10 every single multi for a unit as powerful as Super Saiyan 4 Vegito is amazing usually for your average banner the final guaranteed ssr slot has a very low chance of being a featured ssr right but for this banner since it is guaranteed a featured ssr your chances of pulling you know all these new units like Majito, toa Debura, bardock so on and so forth is just much greater and it definitely in my eyes increases the value of this banner by a ton and also another fantastic feature is that all of the unfeatured SSRs are heroes characters. There's no random fillers, there's no like super old, you know, AGL Super Saiyan 2 Goku or the tech Super Saiyan Vegeta, anything like that. If you pull an unfeatured SSR, then you're also gonna be getting a heroes unit. So basically, the less you've summoned on these banners in the past, the better the value is here. But uh, even for me, right, like I've summoned on every single heroes banner that's ever come out, I still need dupes for all these guys. So if I pull a dupe for Super Saiyan 3 Gohan or Dark Mask King or Supreme Kai of Time, I'd still be really happy because I can use all of them and they're all still very good units, you know? So the point I'm trying to make here is that this banner for pretty much all Dokkan players, whether you're free to play or pay to play, whether you're a newer player or an older player, so on and so forth, um, is going to be pretty good value, man, because of the fact that a ton of these units, especially the newer ones, are very, very strong because of the fact that it's a guaranteed featured SSR for every multi, because of the fact that the only unfeatured SSRs are heroes units too. And oh, one other thing is that these banners only come around once every year. Okay, so if you don't summon on it right now during you know this celebration, then you gotta wait a whole year before you get another chance to pull them again. They're not going to be added to the general SSR pool, at least for this year, maybe uh, next year or in a couple years. But for now, you can't pull them on any other banner except for these Heroes collab banners. And once again, they're only available once per year. So they're definitely some of the more exclusive units in this game. So yeah, guys, there's not really much else for me to say at this point. Uh, my personal recommendation, if it wasn't obvious enough, is that you know, this banner is definitely worth summoning on. I would say everybody should do at least three, four, five multis. If you do four multis, actually, you have like a 50% chance or so of pulling Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. And even if you don't get him, you're still going to end up with a bunch of very powerful, very much usable units for your other teams. So yeah, it's not going to be a waste of stones one way or the other. And that is... All I gotta say, I'm super excited for this upcoming Heroes banner. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys are thinking, what you're planning to do once the banner drops. Are you going to be summoning or are you going to be skipping? I would respect your decision either way, but I do think that some people might end up regretting it if they completely skip this banner. So there you go, guys. That is today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And... If it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. 
to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.